the, in the jobs data NFP on Friday, and it will be the first time he'll be speaking after. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? All good, all good, Sanelli. Great, 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 great. How's the how's the weekend been? It's been all right. I've just been watching some of your older vids. Um, you know, I'm trying to get into the program for for next month, so I'm just trying to brush up on my knowledge. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. No problem, no problem. Uh, so what I wanted us to to look at, it's almost the same thing. Uh just but just from a different context right now, right? Looking at a different economy. Uh, because I think we need to I need to try and drive this point across or drive this point home that if you understand interest rates, then and also where inflation is headed. Uh, just forgive me for my voice, guys. I think I'm coming down with flu. Uh, but uh, based on based on where inflation is headed and based on based on where interest rates are also headed, then you can have a clear direction in terms of currencies, in in terms of trading currencies, trading oil, trading gold, trading whatever asset class it may be. Right, that is obviously directly impacted by that specific economy. So, uh. In the video that I did, we looked at obviously interest rates for the US, right? We made, we made, we created that whole bias, that whole case using what? Using the dollar, of which when inflation was still high around 2021, uh, going into 2022, when interest rates started going higher and all of that, and how it and how it actually drove prices, right? So we made an example using that. So we can do the very same thing using the euro, right? Based on how the euro also moved based on the interest rate developments, based on the expectations of, sorry, based on the inflation developments, and then also based on the interest rate developments, right? So that is very key as well to understand that what I shared in the previous videos, it is something that you can actually use across the board, right? So we're just gonna look at the euro as an example in this case. And then obviously, if you're looking to trade the euro going back to the spreadsheet, we need to understand a few things, obviously. Going back to, to the actual balance sheet, right? Whenever the currency in terms of interest rates are expected to go lower, then the currency is also expected to go down. Then obviously bonds, gold, and the stock and stocks or the stock market for that specific economy, excuse me, is then expected to go higher, right? And then the vice versa is true as well. When interest rates are going higher or expected to go higher, then what does that mean? It means then the currency is expected to also go higher because the currency follows the yield, but all the other asset classes have an inverse relationship to what? An inverse relationship to the actual yield or the actual interest rate, right? So it's not, it's not, it's not only applicable to the dollar, but it's applicable to all other economies because all other economies have bonds. They all have gold. They all, most of them, especially the developed one, they are paired with gold. And then they also do have a stock market. They also have a stock indice, right? So with that and with that being understood is that you need to know what is happening with inflation and then where are interest rates expected to go, right? So if you look at this table here, we can see that currently when it, when it comes to interest rate expectations, the only economy that is not expected to cut interest rates in 2024 is obviously the New Zealand, right? The New Zealand uh, economy, right? And then that is understandably so. Even last week we had the Reserve Bank of New Zealand uh, meeting or the Reserve Bank of New Zealand Central Bank. They came out, they maintained their interest rate at 5.5%, which is relatively high. And then they also increased their projections, their future projections of interest rates, right? So they call it the official cash rate. So they, it, they actually projected them to be above the current 5.5% where they currently sit. So what does that mean? It means that they are opening the window for potential, not to say guaranteed, but put for potential hikes. So what does it mean now? That means that it is now creating a clear divergence that instead of me looking to 
only trade the dollar because the dollar is what is popular, but the dollar is currently not giving me a clear direction, a clear signal. Yes, I may understand that it's not weak, neither is it strong, but it's not as obvious, but there is a pair or in, in an economy that is giving me an obvious direction, which is what? New Zealand, because for New Zealand, the only thing they are concerned about is inflation, right? And as long as inflation remains persistent or sticky, then interest rates will remain high. They no longer focusing on the unemployment side of things, right? So they 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 removed their focus on the unemployment. Not to say it does not matter, it does. But then, as long as inflation remains high, even if unemployment also goes higher, but as long as inflation does not go lower, the central bank will continue to fight inflation with interest rates or monetary policy, right? So that is what we have there. So this is a clear trade now, right? So we knew if instead of you trying to guess on you on the dollar because the dollar is the most famous one it's the most it's a world reserve currency world currency sorry reserve world reserve currency but here's an obvious trade the new zealand dollar so as you can see right here before without even going to the actual charts as you can see let us look at the end of 2024 right in the end of 2024 here are the current interest rates for New Zealand, they expect it to, be remain, to remain unchanged. Those are the expectations of interest rates. And remember what I always say, fundamentals tell you what might happen in the future. And remember, markets move on what? On future expectations, right? So what is expected in the future? Uh, famous investor Stan Drakenmiller also shared in the group uh, his, his actual uh, interview, uh, not interview, but it was like a podcast. It's an hour long uh, that I also shared in the Telegram group. But he's also talking about the same things that... When he was when he was told or when he started getting into the industry, his first mentor always told him, "Don't trade what is happening today." I'll always ask, well for him for them they mostly trade stocks and all of that, but it also applies even if you trade in currencies. What is going to happen for them? It's a longer period in the next eighteen in the next eighteen to twenty four months. For you, you can even look at it in the next three to six months to twelve months. Will what are what are the like what is the likely the likely the like the most likely direction that this currency will take if i'm looking to trade to trade currencies the economy right so obviously with new zealand we are still in we are still in um may 2024 and already they're projecting that by the end of, of 2024 interest rates wouldn't have budged they would still remain the same and obviously it means that they're also forecasting inflation to be higher right so all of that is now giving us what an ex a future expectations, and now we can make informed decisions that are aligned with that, right? Rather than us trying to force trades on the dollar because the dollar is the most famous one. Then we can now look to to trade euro NZD just as a perfect example of trade divergence, right? Because these these are all the things that hold us back because we 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 don't want to trade currencies or asset classes. That, that, that feel unfamiliar to us or that are unfamiliar to us, but we want to trade the most traded ones or the most popular ones, right? Just because we know them, right? But this, this is what essentially gives you that breakthrough kind of trades when you are able to spot divergence ahead of time and then position yourself accordingly. So obviously for the euro, they're expecting the euro to actually, for or not for the essentially the euro, but for eurozone, to actually start cutting interest rates, as you can see, in the second quarter. We are in the second quarter, so they expect it to cut in June. So what does that now create? Or what does that, what, what picture does it now paint for you for the euro economy in the next three to six months if interest rates are expected to go lower? Then weakness, right? And then obviously, you already have the picture of New Zealand, that New Zealand is expected to go high or to remain at the same current level or even possibly go higher, because that is what their central bank said when they when they revised their actual uh, official cash rate higher from above from above where it currently sits, right? So that means that if inflation actually continues to be stubborn or persistent or maybe even starts to tick higher, they they do not mind increasing interest rates, right? So all of that gives that bullish bias for New Zealand and that bearish bias for the eurozone, and then you look to pair those currencies, and then it's also it also becomes a good carry trade. Because we have 5.5% interest in New Zealand, we have 4.5% interest in Europe. But once interest rates start going down in Europe, let's say they go to 4% to 4%, the difference initially was what? It was 
because 5.5 minus 4.5 percent that's one percent right that is that that is the difference initially but the more interest rates go down in the euro once they drop to four percent that's now 1.5 percent interest that is coming to you as an investor in the form of a positive swap because you positioned yourself ahead of time that the the new zealand we're not expecting them to cut interest rates based on the, the data that we have right and obviously things do change but you are always positioning yourself accordingly and that is the most important thing that we need to do right as traders that is that is how you find those breakthrough trades those trades that you can hold comfortably because you are also comfortable on the on the on the what on the divergence the divergence is so clear and it's so crisp and that's this is why they work because it's the same it's it's a sort of similar it's similar to the example that I made of the dollar against uh, against the Japanese yen when I was explaining the dollar and inflation and all of that. But the reason it moved so much or so beautifully, it is because the divergence was so clear, right? But now if you go and, and try and trade the dollar, not to say Euro, Euro USD will not, will not move, will not go lower, but then the probabilities are now in terms of the divergence, number one is not that strong but then also the probabilities start to diminish because also for the dollar, yes, inflation is persistent, it's stubborn currently, but also for the dollar, they're expecting them to cut interest rates this year. Even the central bank has been saying that, right? Obviously for the Euro, most of the central bank speakers have been saying June is the most, prob is the most probable uh, date where they will cut interest rates, but maybe after June, they, there is a bit of uncertainty there, obviously, because we also got the wage data last week that came in higher than expected. PMI data are rebounding, or PMI data is rebounding. So, all taking into consideration of all of those things, yes, Euro USD is a very famous currency pay, it's good to trade, so on and so forth, low spread, blah, blah, blah. But then they are all, they are more, they are, they are, there is not that strong of a divergence. Yes, Euro is, is, is going to be weaker than the dollar, obviously. But then they are both expected to cut. So you're always trying to identify that strong, clear divergence. Those trades that actually jump out at you and be like, take me, take me, take me. That is what you are always trying to do. And unfortunately, it, requ it requires patience. Because like I've always said before, that if, you, if you're trading with fundamentals, 80% of the time, you're going to be early to the party. 80% of the time, you're going to, I spot the move before it happens or before it actually fully plays out. It might have started playing out, but before it fully plays out, if you're really strict in terms of focusing on fundamental analysis and always generating trade ideas, because that is, that is one of your duties as a trader is to always have a trade idea. You should not sit without a trade idea. You should always have a trade idea. And where should your trade idea be? It should be on your watch list. If we've identified that instead of selling Euro, Euro USD, because it won't, it might go down, but it won't go down as much, let us sell Euro NZD because there's a clear divergence there, right? And most uh, European Central Bank members have been saying the very same thing that they're looking or they're expecting interest rates to, to or they, they think that June, they will actually start cutting interest rates. Even their president, uh, Christine Lagarde, has also said the same thing, right? So now you have a clear trade. You now have a clear, a clear direction. And all you now have to do is to go into your technical chart and wait for the technicals to align with that. And those are the easiest trades. Those are those breakthrough trades that you get because you're not just trying to trade the familiar, but you're trying to trade what actually makes sense and actually gives you a clear divergence. Because Euro USD, chances are it will be moving sideways, right? Also, another perfect example is Euro GBP, right? We do have people that are still trading Euro GBP, but there isn't really much of a divergence when it comes to you when it comes to Euro GBP in almost all aspects. There isn't a divergence there, right? So let us let us just quickly go there so that I can show you what I'm talking about. Yes, it will move in the if you're trading it short term, definitely, obviously, it will move, but then. If you're looking to have those trades where the market actually does the heavy lifting for you and you just execute, keep, get that interest payment and then the market also moves in your favor and market forces actually push the trade in your favor, right? 
rather than you trying to squeeze out every pip and over leveraging, then you need to identify that strong divergence. So if you look at Euro, Euro GBP here, <clears throat> as you can see, this is the weekly time frame, and yes, it has been moving, but then essentially it's pretty much stuck. You can say it's pretty much stuck. Even we can start it from here, or even just this low that was made here in July 2023. It's pretty much stuck between the highs and the lows, and it's been moving. It's even worse when you look at it on the daily time frame, right? And for someone who just prefers to trade this, they'd want to force trades during this time period. But when you when you actually divorce yourself from that, this is what I trade, this is what I'm familiar with, and this is what I'll only trade, you just go with, I'll trade what makes sense based on interest rate expectations, based on what is happening with inflation, right? So I just wanted to highlight that as well uh, before I just get on to, to quickly to what I want to show you quickly, right? In terms of now looking at the, at the, at the euro instead of the dollar, right? Same thing, same concept will apply, will apply that inflation drives interest rates, but interest rate drive everything. So we need to always understand what is happening with inflation, where is inflation headed, right? For the euro, right? So for us to actually be able to make informed decisions, right? And then we obviously also need to pay attention to the same way that we pay attention to the US 10-year bond yield for the dollar. We can also do the same thing by paying attention to what? To the euro or let's say the German 10-year bond yield as well because the same way that we use the dollar one it's the same way that we'll use what the 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 the, the euro one or the germany one we use germany because it's a big it's the biggest economy in europe and it's very stable so that is why we prefer using it uh but yeah that is essentially what it is there right so just looking at it and then obviously looking at the most prime example like i said with a clear divergence is euro is jpy jpy weakness Right. So as you can see, there's also what that sort of like tandem movement that we're seeing here between the actual what the bond yield as well as Euro JPY. Because obviously there's a clear there's a clear divergence between ECB central bank as well as the Japanese or the Bank of Japan, right? That is what has been going on all this time. And that is why we've been seeing this clear crisp move where when the bond yield falls. Euro JPY also falls. Once it starts going up, Euro JPY also picks up steam, right? Same way that we have we have that the understanding of the relationship. This will just be a quick one. I won't be going over every single uh, inflation data point because I'm sure most of you understand that because I went I went over it with you guys for the US example. But applying the same thing, interest rates. If they expected to go to go up at that point, they were going up. When did they start going up for the euro? They started going up around July, uh, 2022. So around July, 2022. Yeah, that is when they started going up. July, 2022, right? That is when interest rates started going up for the, for the, for in, in you, in the eurozone, right? So around this time. So July. So July, 2022. So around this time, that is when rates started going up, right? And increased likelihood of interest rate expectations, obviously, because at that point they're going up. What happened? We saw bond yield push higher, then the currency follow suit. Why did Euro JPY move this way? Because there was a strong divergence there. Someone would have been, would have been like, I like to trade Euro USD and then try and do what? try and only trade and buy and buy euro against the dollar that wouldn't have worked because the divergence wasn't there wasn't that strong so let us let us my mo my most because like i titled uh, like i had titled uh, this session that it is things that you need to understand so that you can so that you can actually stop postponing your breakthrough when it comes to trading is that do not marry a certain asset class divorce yourself from trading only the familiar but familiarize yourself with the actual principles because this is what I'm trying to achieve here by showing you this, that this is based on principles. I'm not showing you a strategy that I coined up, but I'm just showing you principles and principles just like gravity. Gravity works for anyone. Doesn't care who you are. It works for everyone and anyone. Same thing with principles. As long as you apply them 
accordingly or correctly in the right context, they will definitely work for you, right? So I'm just trying to show that to you guys that you don't need to marry only one asset class. You can trade any asset class over any time horizon, but just understand the basics of the fact that inflation drives interest rates and interest rates drive everything else, right? So this is what happened around that, around that time when interest rates started going higher. So same thing that you saw in the dollar, we're seeing it with the euro, right? So this is the bond yield. So obviously the currency will follow the, the, the actual bond yield, given that the currency is paired against another currency that is weaker. And the Japanese yen was obviously the most obvious example, because if you go to Euro CHF, it was a different story, right? As you can see, Euro CHF, it was a different story, right? So all of those things need to get good at identifying that divergence, that strong expectations, that strong expectation of the, the expectation, the future expectations essentially position yourself or your mindset should be in the next three to six months. Yes, the dollar is going up based on the data that we have. What is the likelihood of it continuing to go up? Or what is the likelihood of it, of it going lower, right? Create those scenarios in your head so that you can position yourself accordingly. Do not only try and trade the now, but position yourself because the market is always looking ahead. It's always moving based on future expectation, right? So you couldn't, you choosing to trade Euro CHF around that time, obviously a wrong move. Yes, right now, because this year we're expecting them to Euro, the Swiss, franc, the Swiss franc to weaken because obviously, like I explained in one of the videos, because inflation has been, had been below their 2% target since last year, 2023. So we were expecting them to eventually cut interest rates. But that is why we're seeing that this sort of now connection between the bond yield and the what? And the actual move of Euro CHF. But previously there was a disconnection, right? That is also key to understand. So that is, that is, that is one of the main things that you need to understand. And then obviously, if we are expecting the, or we were expecting the Euro to go up along those times, then obviously we could obviously look to do what? Look to sell the, the actual uh, stock market. In this case, as you can see, it was also going up. So when interest rates started going up around July, 2022, you see that it made the last push before it headed lower and then it rebounded and started pushing higher. But you can see the inverse relationship that we're having with both of them, right? And then obviously the more inflation eased in Europe, the more we saw what interest rate expectations or interest rate cut expectations go higher, the, the, the actual stock market pushed higher, right? So instead of you always looking to try and trade uh, NASDAQ or try and trade S&P 500, because that is the familiar, when there is clear weakness of the Euro economy, they are clearly expected to cut interest rates starting in June, high percentage or high probability that they start cutting interest rates in June. What will that mean? What will that do for the, for the actual uh, German 30? What, would, what will that do for the what? For the, for the Euro 50, what will that do? Growth. Exactly. So instead of, of, of us trying to force trades on, on S&P 500 or NASDAQ, because there's no clear direction on, on where the dollar is going right now, here's a clear, here's a clear, here's, here, here are clear setups that we can try and take advantage of. And that is how we need to always try and position ourselves as investors, right? Don't only try and trade the familiar look where money is going or where money could potentially go to in the next three to four months or it's not three to four but three to six months in a sort of medium term period and then try and position yourself in that direction right and then obviously same thing you do with gold euro sorry gold dollar we also have gold euro when it comes to when it comes to when it comes to trading gold Right. Sorry to interrupt. Does this mean we can also look to buy um BTC Euro? Because if um exactly. Eurozone cuts the race, people can buy BTC faster in Euro Eurozone before America because it will be cheaper there before it gets cheaper in America. Exactly. Okay, okay, yeah. thanks so much. You can look for all those opportunities. The most important thing is making sure that whenever you're looking to take the opportunity, you have high conviction. And the only way you get that high conviction is by actually doing more of the preparation. 
be noted, so, noted. Yeah, be so prepared that you you minimize any doubt that you might have. Not to say you will always be right, but most of the time you'll be right because you've done the research. One of the things that Stan Druckenmiller also says there is that invest, then investigate. That is how they 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 used to do it with George Soros and all of them. If they're seeing an opportunity, a trade opportunity, and there is some conviction to it, slight conviction, they invest and then they start investigating, doing a deep dive investigation. If obviously things line up, they stick to the position. If not, then they obviously they 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 exit the position. Not to say that is what you should do. You don't have the capital for that. But I'm just trying to give you that idea that it's all about doing the necessary investigation so that you can be confident in actually sticking with that bias. Even if you write fundamentally, but then technical analysis is still saying, no, I'm still dropping. You are able to stick to your bias rather than to switch bias or just neglect it and forget about it. And then you look down and then you forget about it for the next two months. Two months down the line, you come back to it and it actually moved in your favor, but you missed it because you started to doubt. That is why you need to have a high level of conviction by making sure that you're well prepared. So just to answer your question, yes, you can, you can look for that, but also make sure that you've prepared well in advance in terms of these are the things that can affect it. These are the things that can drive it, but you are anticipating it to appreciate in value because the euro is weakening, right? So obviously, like I said, you can also look to trade gold euro. Same thing. If you're expecting interest rates to go lower in, 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 in Europe, then obviously what, 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 what would drive, okay, besides gold being a safe haven asset in terms of if there's a war, there's risk off, there's recessions and so on and so forth, what, 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 what is gold actually or, or something else that gold is? It, is? it is a storage of value, right? Beside it being a safe haven asset, it is a storage of value. And it's also a hedge against inflation. That is very important to always keep in mind. It's a hedge against inflation. Because why, why am I saying this? Because once interest rates start going lower in, the U, in, in, in Europe, remember, there is, there is, there is okay, I'm, I won't write it down here, but there is essentially, when it comes to interest rates or yields, there is what we call the real yield or the real interest rate. The real interest rate, it is interest rate minus, or it is the nominal interest rate. So it can be the bond yield minus inflation. That is what will give you the real interest. Because remember, inflation erodes what? Erodes the purchasing power of a currency. So if you save your money and the bank is giving you 2% interest, but inflation is sitting at 3%, then it means that you, you're actually losing money because inflation is higher than your return. So your money is, is so your, the, the interest you're getting is not protecting you against inflation. So we also need to look at it in, that, in the same light that, okay, once interest rates start going lower in Europe, and then let's say, for example, sake, it might be extreme, but in, inflation goes down to 1.5%, but interest rate goes all the way down to 0.5%. Now interest rates are way lower than what? Than, 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 than inflation, or even let's say they equal 2% inflation, 2% interest rates. Then most probably it's a what? It's a 0% return. So what does that mean? That means that investing in the Euro does not protect or investing in, 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 in bonds in Europe does not necessar necessarily protect what? Protect investors against inflation or investing in the Euro itself. Because the real interest rates, that is what really matters. The real interest rate is zero or is negative. So what will investors do? They'll move their money out of what? Out of euro, of, out of the euro currency and start investing els elsewhere. Investors in, in, in pension funds or investors or big firms uh, like maybe PIMCO, one of the big bond, that, that are big players in the bond market, all of those uh uh, insurance companies, if they're looking to invest their money, they won't go into the euro because real interest rates are zero or negative. So where will they? They will shift. They will shift their money out of the euro currency into gold because gold is a protection against inflation, right? It's a hedge against inflation. So they put some of their money into gold, and obviously, if there's higher interest interest rates elsewhere, 
that is when they'll divert their capital over overseas. The same thing that we saw with the, with, with the Japanese yen all this time. Why? Interest rates were literally zero. So interest rates were zero, whereas in the US you could get interest of 4.5%, interests of 3%, interests of 2%. So what does that mean for investors? They're shifting their, they're selling their Japanese yen and buying the dollar or investing in the dollar, whether it's, whether it's in the bond market or whether it's the currency, whatever it may be, or in the actual indices, but or the actual stock market, but they're essentially ditching their own currency because it is not protecting them against inflation and putting money into the dollar and putting money into all the other asset classes, right? And that is how you need to look at it. So the same thing would be a driving catalyst for euro gold or for gold versus the euro to go up because euro interest rates are going low, real interest rates are negative and it's no longer protecting against inflation. Right. So now investor will be like, okay, how do we now protect the gains that we made all this time when interest rates were going up in Europe? Let us put our money in a safe haven asset. That's a good, that's a good storage of value. Number one. Number two, let's say hedge against inflation because our money is no longer protected if we leave it with the banks so or we leave it in, in the actual currency itself because interest rates are going lower. So what happens? Gold will start to appreciate as the as the euro as the euro as capital flows out of the euro, euro will weaken. Obviously, based because interest rates are also going lower, so they'll sell the euro right to put into gold and also put into different uh, into different um, currencies or economies. Same thing with Euro New Zealand, right? As I'm talking about it, it's the same notion. Money will flow out of euro and into New Zealand because New Zealand or Euro New Zealand will now become a good carry trade right so do, do you guys understand what i'm the point that i'm trying to drive across when it comes to exactly ex exactly yes i understand yeah so you should always try and position yourself in that way always always have your always have your eyes broaden your horizon and look at everything and then always be generating trade ideas okay uh yeah, I think I think I think we'll end it here in terms of what I had to share. I, I see a hand up, so you can ask your question. Yeah, yeah, just a quick one. So that means all this time that um in Japan, um the interest rates have been low, we could have been long the um the Japanese stock indexes. Exactly. Wow. So that means this whole time. And also another thing I've learned previously, I, I used to be in and out of trades in a day, but um the last trade we took the AUDCHF. Yeah, I've been holding it for for about two weeks now, and it's totally changed the way I look at trading now. I'm now looking. I never had the discipline and the patience to hold a trade for more than two or three days, but I'm holding trades two three weeks, and I'm looking to hold this AUDCHF at least another week. I think I, I'm another week away from my TP. So I just wanted to thank <laughs> you again. It's You're really welcome. transformed the way I look at trading now. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm happy to hear that, man. I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. It's progress. It's real progress, and it's gonna it's gonna change a lot. And it's gonna change your game. Definitely gonna change your game. You you you. It's, it's still the early stages. So what you're seeing now, the longer the more you 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 focus on understanding what is happening fundamentally and trying to identify that divergence. That's the key thing. Whenever there's a clear divergence, those are the easiest trades, and try to always identify those. Right? If they if it's not clear. If it's not clear, move on. There, there's a lot of different asset classes that you can trade. But essentially, to yes. go back to also what you were saying, this is this is just Jap the Japan um, indice or index. Okay. Oh, the Nikkei two 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 five. Okay. Wow. Look, it's been flying this whole time. Exactly. Wow. Okay. 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 I see. So if 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 we had seen this earlier, look. Yeah. If you had seen it, this earlier. Yeah, even even as as early as twenty twenty two, it couldn't break that um support. It would try it tried to break it. It held, it held, it held, and it just flew. Yeah. Uh, wow. And also another thing I realized is once you have the fundamentals, mm -hmm. you you don't panic at retracement levels. When you see, um, there was there was a slightly um big retracement on AUDCHF. I think on yeah. Friday. Yeah. And some of some of my my newer positions that I hadn't put um tight and um wide enough stop losses got taken out. Yeah. But the ones I've been holding for two weeks just I I, I looked and said no this is probably just 
some banks taking profits. And last week was an up week, so it's only normal that this candle will be um a bearish candle to follow up with another bullish candle maybe next week or the week after. So it just gave me that peace of mind to know, you know what, just hold a trade and see what happens. Instead of back in the day when I'm, I'm panicking because I just don't know when the market is going to turn. But I know, I know that until there's a significant news released from the central bank, I don't have anything to worry about. So I really think that this is really the way to trade going forward. Yeah, no, it, def it definitely is. It definitely is. It definitely is. Because because you, you have you trading with conviction. That's that that's the I'd say the beauty of it is that you you know that you I'm not guessing. Exactly. There's some conviction behind the trade. So as you can see also here, we have the Switzerland uh, 20 as well. As you can see, it's starting yeah. to push higher. Yeah. yeah. Interest rates are going lower in, Sw in Switzerland. Exactly. So what has been what has been happening? It has been pushing pushing lower all this time. Since December twenty twenty, yeah. December twenty twenty one, it has been going lower. Yeah, and it only started rebounding now. So as you wow. can see, this is also something you can position yourself into because you know interest rates are going lower in New Zealand, in exactly. Switzerland. So that exactly. is how, that is how you just position yourself, and you just rinse and repeat. But the main the main thing is for you to always be prepared, and that is why I shared yeah. that just as well that professionals yeah. okay. spend more time preparing and less time performing always be exactly. prepared. always have trade ideas so that you do not you you spot these opportunities ahead of time or as they yeah. happen, rather than you always spotting them way later yeah yeah thanks again and thanks for coming on even though you have a code <laughs> no it's okay it's okay yeah i really appreciate you making time I, for us it's I, such I, too I had... much value I had to, I had to stick to my word because I had already committed. <laughs> there was no way I was backing out. One of yeah, one of the few forex guys who actually sticks to their words. There's so much misinformation in the industry. Everybody's <laughs> always trying to trade ICT or some whatever technical strategy, but almost nobody pays attention to the fundamentals. It's it's yeah. it's funny. Like right now when I'm on Twitter, I don't even I've I've followed everybody that just posts technical stuff. I only follow people who have who understand that is is fundamentals that are moving the markets. Yeah. No, it yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah, that's that's it is what what moves the markets, the reason why markets move. But yeah, yeah, guys, I had to I had to stick to my word and uh this is what I wanted to share with everyone. And thank you as well for also taking the time out of your Sunday and actually joining in. My I hope, pleasure. I hope you found some value in it. Yeah, def definitely. I'm definitely, within the next week or two, I'm definitely going to be in the group. As soon as I get some things coming in, I'm, I'm in there. I'm, 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 I'm so happy to join this team. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure. Looking forward yeah. to welcoming you officially. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks again. Okay. This was another good one. No problem, no problem, no problem. I think we're going to call it a night then, guys. Uh, thank you once again. Cheers, eh? All right, take care. Get well soon, huh? Thank you, thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Cheers.